13. The Acts of the Apostles, please. Chapter 15. And commencing to read from verse number 1. The Acts of the Apostles, 15. Chapter 15, commencing to read from verse number 1. And certain men which came down from Judea taught the brethren and said, Except ye be circumcised after the manner of Moses, ye cannot be saved. When therefore Paul and Barnabas had no small dissension and disputation with them, they de determined that Paul and Barnabas and certain other of them should go up to Jerusalem unto the apostles and elders about this question. And being brought on their way by the church, they passed through Phoenix and Samaria, declaring the conversion of the Gentiles. And they caused great joy unto all the brethren. And when they were come to Jerusalem, they were received of the church and of the apostles and elders, and they declared all things that God had done with them. But there rose up certain of the sect of the Pharisees, which believed, saying, that it was needful to circumcise them and to command them to keep the law of Moses. And the apostles and elders came together for to consider of the matter. And when there had been much disputing, Peter rose up and said unto them, Men and brethren, ye know how that a good while ago God made choice among us, that the Gentiles by my mouth should hear and the word of the gospel and believe. And God, which knoweth the hearts, bear them witness, giving them the Holy Ghost, even as he did unto us. And put no difference between us and them, purifying their hearts by faith. Now therefore, why tempt ye God to put a yoke upon the neck of the disciples, which neither our fathers nor we were able to bear. But we believe that through the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, we shall be saved even as they. Then all the multitude kept silence and gave audience to Barnabas and Paul, declaring what miracles and wonders God had wrought among the Gentiles by them. And we know that the Lord will add his blessing to the reading of, our own, of his own precious truth. If it were possible tonight, please try to imagine tonight that I was able to conduct an interview in hell. It could never happen, I know that, but just imagine for a moment that I could interview lost souls in hell tonight. And I went round a number of souls who were alive just like you at one time, who have since died, and tonight they're in hell. And imagine this evening I was able to interview those souls. And I happened to ask them this one question. What do you really believe that has brought you here? Apart from sin. Apart from sin. You see, one thing a lost soul will never ask in hell. A lost soul will never ask in hell. They'll never ask this question. They'll never ask, why am I here? You read Luke chapter 16 tonight, and you'll find a man in hell, and he's talking to Abraham afar, who's afar off, and he's saying many things. But the one thing he didn't ask, why am I here? A lost soul in hell tonight will know why they're there. 
If I was to go around a number of these souls tonight and ask them, why do you think you're really here apart from sin? Everybody's in hell tonight because of sin. But here's the question. Apart from sin, why do you think you're here? Some would maybe tell me it's because nobody told me. I believe there'll be some in hell tonight, and that would be their answer. I'm here because nobody told me. I'm here because nobody took the time to tell me of Jesus and his love. Christian brother, Christian sister tonight, are you guilty of that? Because it would be an awful thing if a neighbor of yours or a family member of yours ended up in hell because you never told them. It's serious business, child of God. Maybe some would say tonight, well, it's not that it wasn't that anybody didn't tell me, tell you the truth, the reason why I'm here is because the world and its riches, I didn't want to give them up. Do you remember the rich young ruler? Man, the rich young ruler knew what he had to do. When the Lord Jesus told him what he had to do, he went away sorrowful, for he had many riches. There'll be some in hell who will say, I'm here because I love the world and its riches too much. Also tonight, there'll be some who will answer this way, do you know why I'm here? because of the fear of man. Do you remember Pontius Pilate? It wasn't that he didn't know who Christ was. He knew rightly who Christ was and would have done everything he could in his power to set Christ free until somebody shouted up from the crowd, Thou shalt not be Caesar's friend if you do it! Do you remember this tonight? The fear of man bringeth a snare. Oh, some will say, I'm here because of the fear of man. I I'm lost and I'm here because of the world and its prosperity. And, I and I'm here and I wasn't able to bring a shell with me. And I tell you the truth, I'm here because nobody bothered telling me. Now, that's what some will say to me. Nobody told me. The world and its riches were too appealing. The fear of man has brought me here. But do you know what 90% of the people in hell is going to answer? It won't be the fear of man was the reason why they're there. And I'll tell you this, it won't be, it won't be tonight world and all its treasures that has brought them there. And it won't be tonight that nobody didn't tell them. I believe tonight 90% of the people in hell will answer, apart from sin, why are they there? Because they're victims of false information. They were, they are victims tonight of false information.
I believe tonight there will be many in hell because of what they were told from pulpits. There will be many in hell tonight because of what religious leaders has told them. There will be many in hell who will lift up their voice and say, I'm here because I'm a victim of false information. Did you notice what was taking place in that very first verse in Acts chapter 15? Do you know what it says? And certain men which came down from Judea taught the brethren and said, Except ye be circumcised after the manner of Moses, ye can't be saved. And these religious leaders were telling this story I'm preaching this, except you be circumcised after the manner of Moses, you'll never be saved. Do you know, friends, what God wants us to see in that verse? God wants us to see in that verse that, that religious talk is very convincing. People are convinced tonight easily convinced of what comes from pulpits. These people in Acts of the Apostles, chapter 15 and verse 1, I can tell you who was speaking here. It was religious leaders telling the people, except you be circumcised after the manner of Moses, you cannot be saved. I'll tell you something else, friend. There's many in the broad road tonight. And they're fooled. And they're frightened by what they hear from pulpits. Oh, yes. Fooled. And frightened by what they hear in pulpits. And I'm not one for knocking denominations. In fact, I am against it totally. I'm against knocking denominations. But let me tell you this tonight. There's people and they're being fooled from pulpits. And I want to call this, first of all, the damning effect of corrupt information. It has a damning effect because souls are being damned in hell because of it. Here we have a crowd of religious men tonight leading people astray. Do you know there's more people led astray in churches than there is in public houses? Because people believe tonight, people believe this tonight, that man in that pulpit's not a dimwit because if he was, he wouldn't be there. That man must be a clever man. That man must know what he's talking about. Let me say something tonight. A lot of learned men can be lost men. And I can tell you something else tonight. There's eternal consequences that comes from the damning effect of corrupt information. Two of the greatest lies told are told in churches. First one's told at a christening font. And a man who puts water on a baby's head and says that makes them an inheritor of the kingdom of heaven, let me tell you, that's a corrupt theology.
That's just like a person tonight telling him, unless you're circumcised, you cannot be saved. You know I know a man very well. In P6, this is when we were in P6, we went to a good news club up in the McElwain Hall in Ochnacloy. It was a good news club. Remember this young lassie, well, she was an old lassie in my day, was a young lassie when I look back now. She's only a young lassie. She held up three hearts, black heart, red heart, white heart. She told us that night the black heart is the one heart that will never get into heaven. The black heart speaks of sin. The only person allowed into heaven is the one with a clean heart, and she held up the clean heart. And I remember that night. She held up the black heart, and she held up the white heart, and she says, who would, who would want to have the black heart tonight? There wasn't a hand went up. And then she held up the white heart, and she said, now who would want the white heart? And every one of us put her hand up. Then she brought up the red heart, and she spoke of the Lord Jesus. And the only way we will ever have a clean heart is by asking the Lord Jesus who died on the cross for us and how we need to be washed in his blood. That young lad went home that night troubled. And his mommy knew he was troubled. He said to the mama, he says, Mama, I need to get the Lord Jesus into my heart because, Mama, I'm not going to get into heaven if I have a black heart. Do you know what you told the wee lad? That's only nonsense, son. We have you christened, and that'll cover you, and you don't have to worry about these other things. And she stopped him from going back. The mother, a few months later on, was away visiting him there, her and the family. And the wee lad was in the living room there, were making washing up the dishes after dinner time, and the wee lad heard the mother telling the auntie about what had happened. Do you know what the auntie said to the mother? That's an awful thing you've done. And the mother says, Oh, well, that's what we're taught from the prayer book. Do you know what the auntie said? Forget what's in the prayer book and get to the Bible. The damning effect of corrupt information this evening. Just because a man wears robes doesn't mean he's right. Just because a man's in a pulpit doesn't mean he's perfect. Now, friend, I won't have anybody say anything about any denomination. I was saved in the Church of Ireland in St. James's Parish Church on the 26th of August, 1985, through the preaching of a Church of Ireland rector. And two men helped me onto my feet. One was Alec Reed, he was a Church of Ireland lay reader, and the other man was Dean Roland Hodgson, a Church of Ireland dean. And I won't have anybody saying anything about the Church of Ireland because God has his men everywhere. And the first man ever allowed me into his pulpit, the first sermon ever preached publicly in a church pulpit was from, for, for George Dixon. He was the Presbyterian minister in Ochnacloy. That was the first time ever preached publicly in a church pulpit. But one thing about Dean Roland Hutchison, he made it clear that baptism never made a baby an inheritor of the kingdom of heaven. Do you know something tonight? There's people holding on to that who will not be saved, who won't trust Christ because they're brainwashed to believe this nonsense. 
wonder you that tonight. Because that's the damning effect of corrupt information. You see. Except you be circumcised after the manner of Moses, you cannot be saved. That's like saying, except you be christened, except you be confirmed, you cannot be saved. But you know, Peter had a great message. Because we're moving now from verse 1 to verse 11. Because here's a delivering effect of a clear message this evening, a clear information. Verse 11, But we believe that through the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, we shall be saved. No, friend, that's the truth tonight. It's through grace alone, through faith alone, in Christ alone, that a man or a woman will ever be saved. Listen, unsaved friend, it's by grace alone, through faith alone, in Christ alone, that a man will ever be saved or a woman. It's by grace alone, through faith alone, in Christ alone, that you'll escape the fires of hell. There's no other message. It's not by water on the forehead. It's coming to Christ in repentance of sin tonight. Because there's no other way. God sent His Son into the world, not to condemn the world, but that the world through Him, through Him might be saved. You see, that's the delivering effect of the clear message this evening. Friend, there's many tonight who are trusting in religious ritual. And they'll be lost just as much as a man with a bottle of beer in his hand. I know a man and a witness to him, and he's dead tonight. He's dead. Oh, he says, I don't need to be saved. He says, sure, every, more, every, every time I drink the communion wine, sure, it washes my sins away. That's the damning effect of these religious talks and beliefs. Let me bring you to the cross tonight. It's through the finished work of Christ on Calvary's cross tonight that men and women are saved. That men and women can be delivered. It's through the finished work of Calvary's cross upon which Christ died. Because there is no other way. Believe on nothing else Believe tonight, sinner friend, on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved. Christendom will do nothing for you. It's only a religious ritual. Confirmation won't do anything for you. It's only a religious ritual. Acts 16, 31. That's the clear message tonight. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved. What do we read in Romans 10, 13? Whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Wonder you in this meeting tonight. Friend, that hurts your belief. That goes against your understanding tonight. But I'll tell you, this is Bible truth this evening. It says, But we believe that through the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, we shall be saved, and glory to God, we shall be saved. Just last year, in Sydney in Australia, a young 28 your old lady, heavily pregnant, developed leukemia. 
the blessing about this leukemia was it was easy treated. It was easy conquered. The doctors came and says, listen, we can defeat this. What we're going to do now, we're going to give you a blood transfusion and we're going to do a cesarean. We'll get the baby out, we'll get the baby born, and we'll, but we need to do the blood transfusion first to make sure everything's okay. Ah, but there was a problem. What was the problem? The problem was that this young lady was a Jehovah's Witness. And she said to the doctor, I can't do this because that's against my religious beliefs. Her family, along with the doctors, along with the nurses, sat by the bedside pleading with her. Take the transfusion, we'll do the cesarean. Listen, the child will be born. It's 98% chance that you're going to survive this. I won't do it, she says. I'm not going against my religious belief. Oh, they pleaded, and they cried, and they wept over her. She wouldn't do it. And the doctors in the family were left heartbroken. In fact, the doctor says it was one of the most distressing things that we had to witness to watch an unborn or to know of an unborn child to die within its mama. To look at her deteriorating. And 13 days after the wee baby died, she took a stroke. And from organ failure, she too died. She could have been saved. And the wee baby could have been saved. But because of religious belief, she died. And I believe there's people who will be in hell and is in hell because of religious beliefs. And there's people tonight who won't get saved, who won't believe because it's against their religious beliefs. But I want to tell you publicly from this pulpit tonight, all religious beliefs will damn your never-dying soul in hell because there's only one Savior tonight, and the Bible tells me, and the Bible tells you tonight, that one Savior is the Lord Jesus Christ who went to the cross for you who suffered there for you, who bled there for you, who died there for you, who rose again for you. There's no other Savior apart from whom the Bible speaks of the Lord Jesus tonight. You see, these people in verse 1 were being fooled and frightened into a religious belief that done nothing for them. Many are like that in the north of Ireland tonight. Many are like that in this town tonight. But I want to declare this tonight. Neither is there salvation in any other, for there's none other name. That's the Lord Jesus tonight. There's none other name under heaven given amongst men, whereby we must be saved. Something that's religiously convincing is not always spiritually correct. Who will you believe tonight? Let's pray. Lord, tonight we know that the devil uses many things to blame people tonight from thy truth. 
O oh God, by the power of the Holy Spirit, thy Holy Spirit, defeat these things tonight. Let people see their need of salvation, their need of Christ. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Time is gone. I don't need to say any more.